Justice with Judge Maybelline will be life because in everything we do, it involves the law. Where's your witness? In the evidence. That's hearsay. It's notarized. I still say it's hearsay. She's fair. You gotta help these young men learn how to do this the right way. Yes, Your Honor. She's firm. Can I say something, Your Honor? No, okay. I don't need to say anything else. She's honest. I'm not your child and I'm not your friend. That's the order of the court. Goodbye. This is Justice with Judge Maybelline. All rise. Both parties raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. In the matter of Marissa White versus Keaton West, uh, Ms. White, you're suing Mr. West, you said, because you put out some money for a trip to Italy uh, that he invited you to go with his job, for his job, and then he canceled the invitation after you had purchased some things in preparation for that trip. What you have to say, Ms. White? So I'm here today because my ex owes me $1,350 um, for trip expenses that he didn't allow me to go to. Me and my ex have been on and off for about six years. We also have a child together. Um, and then he invited me for a work trip to Italy as his plus one. And we spoke about the trip, and he told me to look for stuff to do in Italy. All of them were non-refundable, and he knew about it because we spoke about it a few times. And then a day before the trip, he decided to uninvite me. He said that uh, he doesn't have a plus one, which is a lie, Your Honor, because he didn't invite me so he can have some alone time with his coworker, Kelly. <laughs> and so they can have sex. Um, he didn't invite me. So okay. Now, let me, let me, what, are, what were the things that you booked? I have $250 for a nanny that he said he's going to pay and also have proof for that. $200 for a trip to the Vatican. I also have $100 for a tour around Italy. Okay. And I also have $97 for a dress because he told me to buy fancy clothes so I can impress his co-workers. Um, he told you to buy. I did not. Yes, he did. He told me to impress your co-workers, so you told me to dress appropriately, so I bought a fancy dress. And also $400 for a class to make pasta. Now, did he give you a budget? No, he did not. He just said book stuff to do. And so you said right before you were to go, he told you that he didn't have a plus one. Yep. Okay. Trip canceled. Right? Yes. That's you right. You lied, huh? Your Honor, there's a lot more that goes along with just, it wasn't just a trip cancellation. I, I never. Bottom line is you lied about the plus one. You did have a plus one. So this trip came after I got a raise and I got a new job at the company. This new job came with, yes, a, a few perks, one of those being a trip. When I, when I knew that I was going to go on the trip, I got really excited and I said, we're going to go to Europe. However, I don't know if what my plans are going to be over there, if I'm going to have to do business things, et cetera, et cetera. So I did tell her, why don't you look into some things, for some activities for us to do? I never said book a bunch of things. I especially didn't say book a $400 pasta meal. I said I'm booking, you said sure. I never said to book anything. I did offer to pay for the nanny while we were gone. That is one thing that I did offer you to pay. You still didn't pay for that. Now, Ms. White, keep your eyes toward me. Don't respond to everything that he says. As a matter of fact, don't respond to anything he says. I gave you an opportunity to speak. Zip it for the moment, okay? Your Honor, we have a son that I'm very happy to, to support and take care of, and that's one thing that's always stayed very consistent from okay. my part. Honestly, Your Honor, this relationship for me has been walking on eggshells, and I suspect that she might have some kind of a borderline personality disorder <laughs> because the, my very existence seems to bother her all the time, as you can well see. I get words put in my mouth. It's always been a constant thing like this. It's been up and down for me, Your Honor. Okay, so tell me what you did about it. So when I did tell her about my, my promotion and the trip, I got very excited. And what did she do? She made it about herself. She said, oh, so now you're going to spend more time at work and you're not going to be able to take care of our son because you're going to be gone all the time, et cetera, et cetera, instead of saying, oh, congratulations, let's celebrate. We never celebrated this. I told her, I'm going to go on a trip to Europe. I'm going to bring you along. And what did she do? She goes and books all these other trips, et cetera, et cetera. But you said you told her to look into some things that you guys could do while you were in Europe. Of course, yeah. Okay. It sounded right. like, a, a, like a nice thing to do if I was able to bring her. 
when we're about to go to the trip, she's livid at me for not planning our, our Europe trip, not taking care of my son, which is a complete lie. So I decide, you know what? I need a vacation from this. I go to work all day long and I come back and I get yelled at for trying to support my family. How, how am I supposed to feel of that? You know what? I need a vacation. Absolutely. You know what? Uninvited. And yes, I did tell a little white lie. Listen, I'm not going to be able to bring you on this business trip because I need to stay the heck away from you, you for a little like while. You didn't feel like you need a break when I you had sex with break. me a moment before you told me you I can't bring I the plus one. I told you to be quiet. Coming up on Justice with Judge Maybelline. You told her that you no longer had a plus one, which was a lie. It was... Yes. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was a lie, but because <laughs> I needed some space. Whatever and sure, reason, you still lied. And later... We were supposed to have renter's insurance, and he never paid for it. I had a lot of valuable items that we would have been able to get. But he started the fire, though. Uh, 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 we are not going to have that. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Marissa Hoyt, who is suing her son's father, Keaton West, for travel expenses. Mr. West, you took the lady and decided you didn't want her to go on the trip, and you told her that you no longer had a plus one, which was a lie. It was, yes. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was a lie, but because <laughs> I needed some space. Whatever and sure, reason, you still lied. Now you're trying to justify the lie. So go on. Sure. It, when you're not receiving support at home as much as I was, when you're getting yelled at all the time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then you go somewhere else and someone's celebrating you, yes, there were posts on Instagram or, or on, on social media of the entire work team, but it was never me and Callie doing certain things. That was assumed by other parties. And sure, when I'm being celebrated and stuff like that, that's going to make me feel good. And that's going to make me realize that okay, again, I need to be Okay, again, your brief says when you came back, you decided that you were going to break up with her and you got together with Callie. Is that a lie, too? I did break up with her. Okay. And a short time after, yes, we did okay. get together. And you her. and Callie got together. That's right. Okay. And so now, this time, the breakup is probably you... It will be permanent because you got another woman over It's absolutely okay. going to be permanent. That's, that's, I'm being supported and she's suing right. me because I broke up with her and now she's jealous of another woman. That's why I'm being sued. Okay. I'm not being sued because I, I lied, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm being sued because she got broken and she didn't win. She's used to winning all the time. And that's okay. not going to happen anymore. By your admission, you said look into some things to do on the trip. And she told you about the things that you she had looked into. She didn't tell you that she had paid for it. So that's one thing. And I never but said I would pay for any of those it things. It was spoken so verbally. Would you please be quiet? Sorry. My last time. You're working my nerves. Sorry. Took you six years to work yours. You didn't take you but five minutes to work mine. So stop. Got it. But she told you the things that she had booked. And I'm going to see if they're reasonable or not. Do you really think that $400 for a pasta dinner that I didn't know about is reasonable, Your Honor? Did I say anything was reasonable yet, or did I say I was going to decide whether it was reasonable or not? And you do say you know about it because she told you the things that she had booked. Booked. She didn't tell you that she had paid. That was your testimony. So you did not know about the things she had booked. What your testimony was, I didn't know that she had paid. I didn't know about the non-refundable fees. That's I didn't right. know about that. And you that didn't know that she had paid and the fees were non-refundable. That's right. Reasonable. Yes. Okay? And she didn't tell you that. That's right. When you yeah, booked them, right? And he told you to look into some things, not to just go ahead and book all this stuff. Because he's on a business trip. So there are some days and times that they have to do things business to justify this business trip. That's the way business trips work. Yeah, I know, but he knew. There you go, open up your oh, mouth again sorry. while I'm talking. I thought you were asking me. He didn't know. You booked and paid for non-refundable things, yes. which meant on a certain day at a certain time without getting the schedule from him or his coworkers or his employer about what days would be free time and what hours would be free time so you to do these excursions. When you take a business trip, you got to have some time for business. And then they give you time for pleasure. You booked all this stuff as though you guys were going on a vacation. Yes. And you didn't have to consider the times. So that was not reasonable. 
for yes, you to he, pay non-refundable fees. But first of all, he knew about that. He knew it was non-refundable. Did I ask you to talk anymore? His testimony was, I did not know they were non-refundable. Yes, I told her to look into it. That was his testimony. That's what I heard. And I heard yours. And it disputed what he said. You didn't say that. You said I told him, but you didn't say I told him that it was non-refundable. I told him what I booked. But I am saying to you that you were not being reasonable because it was a business trip. You shouldn't have booked anything that was non-refundable without knowing the schedule. Do you understand that? I do. Okay. So therefore, you, you, I'm gonna, not going to require him to pay for the $400 non-refundable class. Thank you. Okay. You agreed to pay the cost of the nanny, so that $250, even by your own testimony, you agreed to do that. So that $250, you're going to pay. Hush. Both I of you. Hush. No. The dress, nope. Not ordering you to pay for the dress. I know you had something in your closet you could have worn. The trip to the Vatican, the trip to the tour of Italy, and the reason I'm going to order you to pay a portion of this is because you lied that the reason she didn't go is because you could no longer take the plus one. And had you taken her, yes, that's what I'm doing, because you lied. Is you said I'm no longer eligible. The company is not allowing me to have a plus one, and that was a lie. Yeah, but I mean, I didn't know It was know a about, lie. I still didn't know about I the... I don't care. So the ruling of the court is that the defendant shall pay the plaintiff $250 for the nanny cost, which he agreed to pay. And I am ruling that you pay the plaintiff $400 for one half the cost of the other items minus the $400 class for pasta. So $550 is the judgment for the plaintiff. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant has been ordered to pay $550. Yeah, I shouldn't have to pay for any of that. Well, I hope you're going to go to a trip with uh, your nice coworker. It's actually booked. Oh, great. You should go make pasta. Coming up. What you mean, did you put out the candle? It was his candle? Yes, it was his candle, yes. Well, you certainly neglected to say all of that. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. Court is now in session with the Honorable Judge Maybelline presiding. Thank you. You may be seated. In the matter of Marcus Thomas versus Owen Harding, each of you is suing the other for $10,000. Based upon there was a fire that caused damage in your apartment that you shared, I'm going to let you explain it to me, starting with you, Mr. Thomas. Hello. Hello. So my name is Marcus, and I'm suing my roommate Owen for $10,000 for his negligence. Our apartment caught on fire, and we were supposed to have renter's insurance, and he never paid for it. I had a lot of valuable items that we would have been able to get. But he started the fire, uh, though. Uh, 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 we are not going to have that. Go on. So he had no renter's insurance, and I don't understand why you're suing him for $10,000 because he didn't have renter's insurance. You have to, it's, something goes with that. Well, Your Honor, in his lease, he was supposed to have renter's insurance with our landlord, and because we don't have the insurance, a lot of my valuable items that I paid for, I can't get any money for. Who paid the rent? Well, we split the rent, but oh, okay. utilities, he was telling me that because of his job, he needed to save a little bit of money, which I'm okay with, I understand, because I'm doing financially well. So it was supposed to be 50-50, but it became 60-40. But now, so you're saying $10,000 worth of your goods were damaged as a result of this fire. He blurted out that you started the fire, so let me go over here. Yeah, we was out on uh, brunch, right? So we're coming back, and then we see smoke. I'm like, yo, what's that? So he's talking to the fire department, like, well, yo, what happened? Then tell it's a unit. So I'm like, did you, like, the candle, because they're saying it's a candle. Did you put out the candle? Oh, yeah, you know, like, my bad. What you mean, did you put out the candle? It was his candle? Yes, it was his candle, yes. Well, you certainly neglected to say all of that. Coming up. You can't run around just assuming and being careless when you're dealing with fire. You never know. You should have been thinking. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. We're back with the case of Marcus Thomas, who is suing Owen Harding for negligence. 
You just talked about your stuff that was burned up. So the plaintiff lit a candle, and he didn't turn the candle out, didn't blow it out before yes. you all went to brunch. Yes, he didn't blow it out. Now, how did you manage to leave those facts out? Well, Your Honor, I always light a candle because my roommate forgot... I, I don't care about why you always light it, but how you get past the fact that it's your fault? Because I don't believe it's my fault, Your Honor. What do you mean you don't believe it's your fault? Because renter insurance is for incidental, and what that's what happened. What did the fire department say that caused that fire? They said a candle. That who lit? That I lit. That who owned? That I owned. That who was negligent? Well, when we were leaving the apartment, he was the last one to leave. <laughs> There you go again. You have a candle burning. You burn candles. He doesn't burn candles. That's what you enjoy doing. So why wouldn't you check to make sure that candle was out? Particularly since you have all these valuable things. Well, Your Honor, it's not that I enjoy burning candles. He's musty, so I like to come back home to a nice smelling house. <laughs> So I, no, I'm, I'm being honest. So he should at least take some responsibility. Like you said, I'm paying for everything. My money's longer, so he can't turn around and be like, oh, let me blow out a candle. Mm. So your argument is, but for the fact that he didn't pay renter's insurance, I could have gotten reimbursed for my stuff. His argument is, but for the fact that he lit that candle and didn't burn it out, I wouldn't have lost my stuff. Your Honor, You're both in the same position. Your Honor, what is renter insurance for then? What is blowing out a candle for? Now you're dumbfounded, right? You try to shift all the blame over here because he didn't have renters insurance. What is your responsibility when you light a candle? Judge Maybelline's verdict when Justice with Judge Maybelline returns. You're watching Justice with Judge Maybelline. You can't run around just assuming and being careless when you're dealing with fire. You never know. You should have been thinking. Just like he wasn't thinking and forgot he didn't pay that last month's insurance. He wasn't thinking. You're equally at fault, you're equally responsible, and I'm not ordering either one of you to pay for anything. It's a damage that happened because of irresponsibility on both of your part. But Your Honor, then what is the point of renter's insurance then? He told me that You know he... what? I heard you. You still not hear me. So that means that you'll rent the next place and you'll put a candle in the next spot, and you'll leave out the house without blowing it out, and you'll cause a fire somewhere else. But I'll pay insurance. Do you insurance. know that the apartment was damaged? The owner could charge both of you with the cleanup of that apartment. Or the apartment could have burned down completely, and then the owner would have been charging you for the cost of all of his goods and for his property damage. He wouldn't charge me because I'm not on the lease, I'm on the sublease. I didn't sign a contract that included renter's insurance like he did. Okay, you didn't. But you know what? He didn't sign a contract that said you could light a candle and cause it to burn. I'm denying your claim, and I'm denying your claim. I think you're equally responsible, you're in the same boat, just uh, denial of both claims. That's my order. All rise. Judge Maybelline has ruled both claims have been denied. Bro, you know that's not fair. She just felt sorry for you. You owe me money. I didn't feel sorry for him, and you don't tell me why I made my decision. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. He didn't do what you were supposed to do. So now you're going to equally suffer. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.